obviously you're not fighting in Abu Dhabi this time. Is it when the original fight with Nathaniel Wood kind of when he fell out, did it, was any part of you just like, can I just not catch a break being able to fight here in England? That's it. I just had the same conversation just then. It's like, well, I just thought it would just never happen. Like, it's just not meant to be. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, that's the first time I've had an opponent pull out on me here in the UFC, and then it would it would happen on a UK show. So when they came up, came to you with the replacement name, could it have been anybody you just really wanted to fight on this card specifically? Yeah, I would have took anybody. Um, as the weeks was going down, I was getting more and more agitated. I thought they would never match me, and then they got the perfect match up a week out. So obviously you've you've been gone a bit. You've been not. No, we haven't seen you in the octagon for a bit. So how has the last like several months been for you, just in camp, just dealing with like just life and everything? It's been different. Um, I feel like my whole camp's kind of been tuned to actually making the fight. Uh, I've been injured uh, a long time, and my focus is just getting back here and making that walk again. So given everything that you just said, like the, the past few camps have just been getting there, but now you, you have a new opponent, you're fighting in the UK, you have the camp behind you. Have, is, has this week just been different all around for you? Yeah. Uh, I'm just grateful to be here, really, more than anything, and I'm excited. Uh, usually, fight week, I'm like phew, drained, miserable, but I'm happy, man. I feel good. And your new opponent, what did you make of, make of him when they presented your name with you? Did you look, did you look at tape or just... Didn't matter, focus on yourself. Yeah, of course. I, sh I watched tape straight away. Um, he's good, he's aggressive, and it's a good matchup. And final one for me, uh, can I get your thoughts on the main event? How do you see Leon and Kamaru playing out? I think Rocky does it again. Uh, I don't know how he does it, but probably points off another finish. I feel like he's got, got that confidence. We were at home in front of the home crowd, and I don't know if Usman's going to be the same fighter. Laron, over here, right in front of you. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, they announced your opponent. Do you say it's been a week since you've known about him? Like Pretty much, probably like nine days or something, ten days or something. Yeah, because Nathaniel announced that he's out a while ago. So what was that process like of trying to find your replacement? I was just thinking who like, who they're gonna, who they're gonna match me with, but, but it's the UFC in it. It's four weeks out. I thought surely I'll get an opponent. Like there'll be loads of people that I'd love to fight me. I'm undefeated. Um, I thought I was sure I'd get a matchup, but they left it late. That must have been stressful, right? So during training camp, were you thinking I might not even compete? Yeah, I feel like when you've got somebody in mind, it's 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 better to train. Obviously, you can uh, sort your drills out specific for the opponent. You have also can push yourself harder because you're thinking about somebody, do you know what I mean? But at a point, I won't lie, like two weeks out, I was thinking maybe I'm not going to fight. Maybe I'm not going to fight. But I just kept focused and pushed. Uh, he's a good opponent, has a good record, but is it a little disappointing? I mean, you're, you're a highly touted prospect to not be fighting perhaps somebody ranked. I'm not really bothered, to be honest. I just want to I just want to fight. Like I said, I've been out for a bit. I just want to fight. I just want to compete. Once I get in there, if I get the win on Saturday, then I'll be pushing for, I'll say, I only want top 15 from now. I'll be basically 5-0 in the UFC. All right. Thank you. Lerone, I know... There was a lot of stress going into this and trying to work out who you were going to fight and whether you were going to fight. Mm -hmm. Now that's all dealt with and you're here, you have a fight. Are you able to now relax into what I would call like a regular fight week routine now you have an opponent, even though it's a short notice one? Yeah, of course. Um, as soon as I got the name, I was pretty much into fight mode then, as soon as I got the name. So all that, all that stress is now in the, in the rearview mirror. You haven't, that's not lingering. Yeah, yeah, of course. I've got to focus on Saturday night now. I've got a good opponent in front of me. I've got to be on my game and make sure I get that win. And I've been asking this to some of the other Brits who've been coming up there to, to, to talk to us. That atmosphere in the O2 is pretty special. What's it going to mean to you to walk through, through the curtains and get into the octagon in front of a packed crowd? People who are predominantly going to be cheering for you on Saturday night. I've never done it. I've never experienced it. For, so for me, it's a new experience, and I can't wait to. I can't wait to do it. I fought in front of uh, my debut fight was a full a full crowd, but it was like the opposite. They they was cheering against me. Um, I enjoyed that as well. But it's going to be fun to fight in front of my home crowd. My family are here. My friends are going to be here. So it's going to be amazing, man. And your UFC career so far, through no fault of your own, has been pretty sort of stop-start. There's mm. been lots of little roadblocks thrown in your way. 
after Saturday night, are you now keen to just sort of build some momentum and, and become more, more active through 2023? Well, I've always been keen, but f things out of my control have stopped me from being active. Obviously, COVID happened. That set me back um, after I just made my debut. Two cancelled fights, then my visa. Um, it's just been one thing after another. It's not really... I don't sit back. I train all year. Do you get what I'm saying? So I'm not sitting on the bench thinking, oh, I'll fight at the end of the year. I'm trying to fight. But God willing, we have a better look this year and we have three fights. Great stuff. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Lauren, just over here. What kind of adjustments have you had to make in preparation for such a short-notice opponent in Gabriel? <sighs> Nothing, really. What can you do in, on 10 days? Um, you're pretty much wrapping up your camp at that point. Uh, but we're ready, man. We're ready to go. And you said that you won a top 15 after a win on Saturday. How do you envision getting your hand raised on Saturday? I just think it's going to be a different level for him. He's not fought at this level before. Um, obviously, he's a good fire, he's 10 and all, but I feel like I've fought better opposition than him and he's going to feel the level in there. Thank you. Laurent to your left here. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but is this your, this is your first fight after the accident that you had a, yeah. a while back? Um, the pictures on Instagram look, look pretty grim, but how how bad was the accident and like uh, the hospitalization? Yeah, it was bad, close to death, but um, I'm back to full health now, which is great, and I feel just as good as I've always felt. And your your nickname, well, your moniker is the miracle, but that's like twice now that you say that you've cheated death. I mean. Mm -hmm. What do you attribute that to? Just luck or being divine intervention? or Purpose. I've got a purpose. I've got a bigger purpose in life, I feel. Um, and that's what pushes me on. I feel like I'm here to do something big, like obviously. Um, so I've got to do my part. And what were the emotions after? Well, obviously, you were, you were in agony, obviously, when, once the, the accident happened. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Fight career-wise, what were the emotions? Yeah, I thought it was game over. I didn't think I didn't think I'd be back here anyway, um, and especially not so soon. Uh, doctors were saying all sorts of stuff like whatever, like fighting's not no good now and whatnot. So yeah, it was heartbreaking at the time, but got good people around me, uh, good friends, and I just stayed on stayed on course. Cheers, man. Thank you. Just to add to that, Lorraine, just here. Um, yep. So were you told that you wouldn't fight again or told you shouldn't fight again? Is that how that went? Yeah. Uh, the dot, the dot, one of the doctors I've seen said that, but I feel, I feel like they always say that, things like that, just to, keep, just to keep you safe. But I've made a full recovery, so I'm back now. And just to talk about, obviously, the stresses of the opponent change, but for all you've been through, it probably felt like, coming, it felt like something quite small for everything you've been through. Yeah, of course. I'm just happy to fight. Like I said, anybody that would have given me, I would have taken the fight. Um, I'm, just, I'm just dying to get back in there. And just finally, obviously, a massive night at the O2. There must have been times where you just thought it wouldn't happen or were you always determined that you'd always get one of these big nights and be, be you know, back right at the big time again? Yeah, I've always been concerned that it won't happen. Even right up until last week, you're just thinking, oh, something's going to happen, something's going to happen. Your opponent's not going to be able to get over, or it's just something. Like, something's always in the back of your head. So until I get in the cage, then that's when I'll be happy. Yeah. Uh, so something you said in, in an Instagram post when you were reviewing your year 2022 mm -hmm. is he who... He who knows others is wise. He who knows himself is enlightened. Mm -hmm. What did you learn about yourself as a person in your time away from fighting? That I'm resilient and I know what I want. This is what I love. That it showed me that this is what I love. Like beforehand, I kind of, I kind of was just doing it, if that makes sense. I was just kind of doing it because I'm good at it. I don't do anything else. But now, like, I feel like that time off was good for me. I needed that. Um, and it, and it's just shown me that what I can do. I've seen other people do it that I feel like I'm better than. So I've got to go out there and just push now and, and work and, and get what I deserve. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, Lerone, hi. Um, yeah. we, we spoke to Nathaniel Wood uh, recently and, uh, you know, he, he sends you all the best and he wants you to win. But he still wants to have that fight with you. If you win on Saturday night, does that fight still interest you or have you moved on from that fight now? I'm here. Where is he? He was sparring two weeks ago. He could have made the fight. Um, I've got in there two, two UFC fights with 
torn ligaments in the knee, torn ligaments in the arm, and I made the fight. He didn't. He pulled, he pulled out and then started uh, tweeting, oh, I would have put on a masterclass. Like, you pulled out. Do you get what I'm saying? Don't talk about, just make the fight and then talk. But for me, if I win on Saturday, I'm looking top 15. He's not top 15, so Thanks there's your much. answer. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Laurent, yeah. I know it's been a while, but do you recall what was going through your mind in the moment you landed that knockout blow against Marquana Mirkani back in October 2021? Relief, <laughs> relief. I lost the first round, um, but I was confident. I was always confident that I was gonna, I was gonna finish him in the second or third round. I knew my gas tank was way better than his. Um, I knew just defend for the first round, and then I start wearing him out. But that was that was big relief. It was a big knockout. And do you feel any added pressure to keep your record uh, clean in the UFC? No, nah, not at all. I don't think about the record. I just feel about. I just think about the end goal in it, and I know if you take an L somewhere, it don't, it don't really matter it's how how you react to it in it. And um, as long as you get to where you go in the destination, it's all good. Thank you. Thank good you. luck. Oh, one more in front. Yeah, I would, I would imagine after your last four fights, that fight week in Abu Dhabi has become the normal for mm -hmm. you. So how has fight week been like not having to go through like that same hotel, that same flight, and everything? To be honest, I love Abu Dhabi. I've, en I've enjoyed it. That's all I know in the UFC. But it does feel good to be home. Um, it's just less work in it. I just breathe in the English air. It's just like, I don't know. It's strange, man. It's strange. I've not fought here since 2019. So looking forward to it, man. Would you want to fight in Abu Dhabi again then? Or are you just... Yeah, yeah. of course. I'd love to fight there. Um, I'll always go back to there. That's basically my home. My second home, should I say. Um, but the UK has been on my radar for pff, since I've since I've started MMA, basically. So.